All right, there's a lot of videos out there about MCPs and other things. I'm gonna step back into time here and talk about fine tuning. It's not a topic I see much out there right now, but I needed to do this and it's so easy and I think it produces decent results that it's worth it in certain cases for you or your customers. In this particular case, I've been struggling to generate enough content and I have a lot of things I wanna write about, but I don't wanna initially write every word. I want to have a hand in it, but not. I want to see if these agents can really do this stuff for me. But it never gets my tone right, so I've always tried to use multi-shot prompts where I give it enough information, but even then, it just didn't get enough of what I wanted to feel like, yeah, this is my my the way I would write it. So what I'm going to show you is how I took some data I have and fed it into an NAN workflow. It's really simple, and I'll share it. I just got to remember to share it. And then you'll see how easy it is to do fine tuning, but hopefully you'll save some time through this because it took me a little bit of time. Now, I did this many years ago for a website <clears throat> that I made called Recalls. It was called Total Recalls. I should have kept that domain name. And I needed help tagging the data, so I did it then in 2023. So here I am again, though, using N8N to do it, which is a lot easier. So in this particular case, one of the N8N builds walkthrough is this one here. Now this build will take the data at a scheduled time or when you click test. And so what does this process look like? I have some files in a folder and at first I kept it like down to two files, okay? And I just said, okay, go get those files from that folder and then go iterate or loop over those files. And when it did that, it would then extract the data from those markdown files. You could probably use anything. You just have to be a little bit more organized here to say PDF extract this way and whatnot. I stuck with markdown. Now I grabbed all this data from a book I wrote and I don't suggest you buy the book. It is on sale, but it is code heavy. It's PHP and I've moved away from that anyways. So I extract the file. I then, and then I save the request to my no code db which i'll show in a moment and all of this stuff is this is running locally but obviously you can do it anywhere and i was trying to hit my local llama with the particular part that really matters and so what i'm doing here is i'm saying hey llm i'm going to give you this big chapter and what i want you to do is break it up into phrases or sentences that kind of represent my writing style and then find those and so that's what it did now remember, I just kept working through this and I kept giving the results to Claude or ChatGPT and I just kept saying, help me make a prompt that will make this better. A lot of this comes down to using the AI to help you even prompt and that's really important. And I was trying a local LLM. I was using Phi and then I used QWQ and I wasn't, it wasn't bad. I just wasn't getting the results I wanted. And I think I could have kept pushing it, but then it was on my Mac and being a little bit slow so I just backed away because I was just, it's like four or five hours later. Okay, so then I just threw it at Gemini and Gemini then gives us a list of data, which is what we want. Now, what we're gonna end up with though is this particularly formatted file called JSON-L and it's gonna have the output and the input as for each one of them. These represent the output. Now, the input is the one we don't have. So after the LM takes the time to make all of these phrases or sentences or find them in my chapter to find out how I write. Then I hand all of those over to this next LLM. Now this whole time I am saving this stuff in no code DB and that helps me just to iterate and save some state as we go. So you can see very brightly is there a dark mode? Guess not. So what you can see very brightly, sorry about that, is that it started to take the pages and turning them into data for me to then update. And so on the right hand side, let me see if I can reload this and make it work. Okay. On the right hand side is just the sentences it found in the book or phrases. On the left hand side is what we're about to do now. And that's where for this training, not training data, for this fine tune data, we need to produce a file that gives it both the input and the output. And the output is how I would say it. The input is a question that will drive the LLM to then phrase it that way. It's a way of helping the LLM know if it's asked a question a certain way, what should the format of the answer be? And so what happens here to do that 
is I say to the LLM, we loop over all of those. We're looping through all whatever it finds inside of a chapter. And the output then, it takes that to create the input, which is like the question that could lead to the output. So then we see that it says, hey, I have some input here that I think would go with the output you gave me, which is really input. This gets confusing, but again, it's because we're trying to drive the final results. And the final results are a file. And that file is gonna look like this. And it's just a not, it's not, it's just a, and I, there'll be a tool I'll share shortly so you can make this easily. But the file is just this kind of like line by line object that has no commas separating the objects and lines and it's just a message role content. And so the system that you just saw created the role user content. What is the speaker's plan for any then? And then role assistant content, it will be a lot of, and then that's how I would answer it. So if we keep going down this, it will just be all these lines of content, including a system prompt of who I am in this context. And then the user, should testing be done in sync or should sync? And then what would my answer be based on the style of writing that I did in that book? So by the time we're done, we not only have the LLM finding the different sections in those chapters, that would have taken me a lot of work to extract, but then we have it making the particular example questions to lead to that so we can make that file. And that saved me a lot of time once I got it going. So then after I'm done generating the file, sorry, generating the NoCodeDB database, because you see here, it's not writing a file. It just made that database for us. NoCodeDB, Google Sheets, whatever works for you, doesn't matter. It just has to have a uh, column that helps you with the input and with the output. It doesn't matter what tool you use. You just need some columns for the input, the stuff the LLM is going to make relative to the output, the phrase or sentence that represents how you might say something in this case. Now, when it's done with that, then this other workflow says, okay, when you click me, I'm going to go to that no code DB. I'm going to take this code that ChatGPT made in one shot and just mash all that data together to make the format you want. I'm gonna convert that data to a file, and now we have our file, and then I'm just gonna save it to the disk. And then I'm gonna come here, and I'm gonna send it to ChatGPT. Again, this is just an HTTP request that I just asked ChatGPT to write it for me in curl, and I just paste it in there, because you can paste stuff into this in curl. And I already have my OpenAI credentials saved here with N8N, so it's really, pretty straightforward. Now, when it uploads the file to ChatGPT, then we have to go upload or send that file to the fine tune system. And that's what we did here. We just send it over to the fine tune API. And then we wait and it could take 20, 30 minutes, depends on the size. I really don't know the time because I would walk away and go do something. But basically I would just say, Hey, keep checking. If it's not one of these states, or if it is one of these states, keep going running, validating, queued, and then come back every 30 seconds. And then if it's done, it would slack me. And that was it. I left this one here to just go check for all the jobs. So you can just quickly see every job that's there. But that was it. You now have this data you got from documents or markdown files or PDFs, and you have it in this database, Google Sheets or NoCodeDB, and then you mash it into this json.l file and send it to their API and wait. Okay, so now we have it. So if you go to their playground, so we'll go to the fine tuning area. So we go to our fine tuning area for the particular organization or whoever you're logged in as, and we see the fine tuning data and we see some results, which I gave this a chat GPT and said, yeah, this looks fine. But what's most important, and it was so bad at first, is I can throw some content at it in the playground. So I just clicked here and I went over to the playground and started asking it questions. And the first results were just horrible. They were short. They made, they just were like, it just the, the LLM could not do it. It would just, on the left was what it would be if I used a regular model. On the right was what my model made. And it was just like horrible. So it took a long time and a few tries. So don't give up. Keep going back and forth with ChatGPT. For me, 
I think I ended up using this model and that helped a lot. I think at first I was told to use the 3.5 and I didn't get great results, but that might be because I also trained the data, sorry, not trained the data. I created all that data using a prompt that made the responses too short. And I think then the LLM fine-tuned, the model fine-tuned that I wanted short. So it was just a dead end. So I had to start over. And again, you just start over by re, you know, getting your data, fixing your prompt, doing a few of them, changing this prompt to be the thing that you think will be the next best try, and then running it again. Now remember, you could just give this prompt to ChatGPT and then give it one of your files and say, do this and get a sense of things there. You don't have to do it here. Keep your iterations simple. All right, so now when I go to write things, I hopefully will get results like the ones on the right that kind of sound more like me and that's great. And I have a lot of things I wanna write or do and I outline them and I chat with the system with voice put it out there and have it flesh it out for me. And it's a big help. Now, what I didn't show was how to use the model. So I'm coming back to do that. And basically, I don't know if you, when I went to ChatGPT, I don't know how to use it there, but in N8N, when you choose your models from a list, you'll then see the models you've trained in there. And if you ever have trouble doing that, either give it a little bit more time to show up or, Consider maybe you use the wrong API token and it makes no sense, but I was using one and I had to go make another for my default project in my org and then it worked. I don't understand why, honestly, but when I originally had that problem, I went here, looked at the model, saw it just fine, and then clicked playground and got an error. And I knew at that point either it wasn't really ready to use or I had a permission issue, and there's some threads on that, but I think it was timing, I'm really not sure. But by the time it was ready, I came here and ran it in this one. We'll see how it goes, I'll use it for the transcripts, but hopefully it will write a decent introduction for this video, but that's how you can use it. But anyways, that's how you can fine tune, that's how you can turn content into more your voice, even tag content, you can give it a bunch of content, say these are the tags, for me, it was about how to get all of this data into a place where I could maybe have tags to help out. Now, this one's tagged, but there's not a ton of tags because of just time has gone on and I haven't updated the database or the model. But it was a way to get some tagging in there when I couldn't do it before, and that was a while back. But that's it. Give it a go if it's worth it for you and see how it goes. Now, remember, I don't have to use this model for everything. I could have an agent or a flow that makes an outline, does some research, puts together results, and then have the final agent take this model and use that to conform it into my way of speaking. So it's not, you're not stuck all the time with this. So that's another interesting thing I can pay off. All right, there is a big uh, project I'm working on. It's basically, some of it's there. Just, I'm gonna show how to build from scratch using all these awesome tools, all these self-hosted tools. MCPs are going to be a big part of it, and that will be coming up. It's just taking a while to really get it right. I work on it every day with customers. I'm fleshing out what really works, and then I'll post those as well coming really soon. All right, thank you.